Honestly, I think this cover deserved a better book. Hello peoples and popples and welcome back to my channel. I'm Fiction Flora, you can call me Flora, and today you're going to be watching me read some books, huh? Imagine, what if I read books? Um, so this is going to be my first reading vlog in a long time. The first one I ever did was for the Asian Readathon back in 2019. I think I've privated those videos right now because honestly, I personally did not like them. So for all intents and purposes, this is the very first reading vlog. I did do a different intro, but after watching it back, it was a little bit convoluted and like you could tell I was a little tired. So you'll see it anyway but wanted to give you a bit, little bit more um this is just a reading vlog as i catch up on my reading goal i fell behind a little bit because i didn't really read anything between march and like may just because of moving and stress and starting a new job i just like wasn't in the headspace to really pick up a book so i started off this reading vlog like 11 books behind um and so that was so it's just me trying to get through 11 books in seven days and catch up um some of them i did a little bit more talking and explaining of the books but um some of them i was just like i don't have much to say either way i hope you enjoy the video um this is pretty heavily spoiler filled for every single part of this vlog so if you'd prefer to just see my thoughts about everything towards the end you can just go ahead and look in the description box i will have um the timestamp for when i'm just doing my recap at the end that way if you are planning to read any of the books i pick up you do not have to sit through all of my spoiler filled thoughts otherwise if you're gonna stick around be prepared i am very um i check in way too often either way i will see you guys at the end of the video hello peoples and popples and welcome back to my channel i'm fiction and flora you can call me flora and today we are trying to catch up on my reading challenge um i am currently 10 books behind um and while i wouldn't feel bad if i didn't reach it it was it felt really nice when i did last year so um what we're doing is this is just a vlog i think it's going to be about a week long um and i am going to do my best to get through 11 books this week so the goal is to read 11 books this week um i have two short ones that i am um working my way through right now i am just under 50 percent through horror hotel um which is about a group of teens who are paranormal youtubers and they're going to this hotel which is very blatantly modeled after the cecil hotel in la and one of them is and they're like going to investigate it the thing is one of them is an actual psychic who can um sense and talk to the dead um so that's where we're going so far so far it is a solid like two star for me it's not like it's it's not even just my preferences but the writing somehow sounds wrong and i could not describe to you why it definitely feels like an adult writing a teen which is what it is um but like the premise is what i'm interested in because i love a haunted house right and so i'm hoping maybe the plot will help save it but so far like characterizations I don't know if they seem inconsistent but they seem a little out of nowhere i don't know i'm confused anyway um i'm like i said i'm a little under 50 percent i'm at page 88 it is currently 8 28 on sunday june 26th um and so i'm going to go ahead and read some of this and i will check back in with you once i am done oh. I think I was giving it a lot of credit in my notes when I wrote this is like a Skinamax movie. Yeah. But it, it actually almost feels lower than that. Like, I really see runs off, and she's like gargling and dying, and turning like crazy old looking. He's like, so sorry. I'm so sorry. These teens, who are ghost hunters, um, have found an actual dead body in this hotel. Like, the like someone who has recently passed her actual physical body is there her spirit's there as well but her body is there and they're like we're gonna solve this we're gonna we're gonna solve this and on the one hand i get the distrust in the police to actually solve a murder case especially one um 
in a bad part of town because let's be honest with ourselves do they ever actually care about the disenfranchised no um but also these teens have decided to take it upon themselves to do a murder investigation inside of a haunted hotel where a serial killer is like it's gonna be fine because this is a ya book but also icky <laughs> just and the thing is they know it's not a ghost that killed her they know it must be a human being because according to the rules of this book ghosts can't affect the living except like when someone who has like strong psychic energy is around and they can use that but other than that like a ghost can't strangle a person so it has to be another human being so um also for earlier today in the terms of this book earlier in that same day they ran across uh they're they're in a hostel and they ran across the person who is sharing their hostel with them and he is also a psychic but the thing is our main girl psychic can't read his mind why can why can he bella swan her and she can't bella swan him hmm why can she not read his mind but he can read her entire life is that not suspicious and she invited him to go ghost hunting with them she met this man like four hours ago she met him and well and like it's her and her three friends so there's four of them total and they have like this buddy system they're like hey whenever one of us needs to go somewhere let's stay together it's the buddy system so that we can make sure we're safe she ignores that so she just leaves while all her friends are asleep they wake up she's not there and they're like panicking they're like where is she and she goes back and they're like dude why didn't you tell us why didn't you text or something and she gets an attitude you guys not only are you in the sketchy part of town you're on a different state in a sketchy neighborhood they wake up to find out she's gone and she gets an attitude with them because because she's stubborn and that's a personality trait of hers <sighs> she just kind of sounds stupid you don't understand why your friends are worried about your safety okay I keep meaning to check in when I'm farther into this book. It's literally only been like 10 pages, but I am still so furious. So they like find the dead body. They end up contacting someone who's not the dead girl and they're like freaked out. They call the front desk and they're like, hey, you should check on this room. We heard a scream and, and the people at the front desk were like, we didn't hear nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. But then the boy she met earlier that day, the one who's staying in the room, the other psychic, comes up to the room and her friends and her like teammate is like hey we're not telling him anything because she has not told them anything about this man she hasn't told him them that he's also a psychic she hasn't she just she just said hey i went on to get lunch with this dude and told nobody anything else so he comes back and she's like mad that they're like why are you trying to tell this random guy that we just found a fucking body obviously this is a book so it's not that direct um because for some reason people who write teenagers don't think teenagers know how to speak directly to other people um again not in my experience but i am a single person um but i'm just like oh my god you have years of friendship with these people and you are just being a bitch about it because of a dude you met four hours ago yeah he's maybe the first person you ever met who could probably understand your experience but still have you like you live in 2022 2021 i don't know what year this is supposed to be but it's definitely the 2010s they got youtube and <laughs> smartphones but you live in this year and you think that you can just trust strangers i'm back so the thing is they are so like okay one of her friends is a guy she's known for a while he does have a crush on her but and so everyone is acting as if his reluctance to trust this new guy is just jealousy and like if they were in any other situation sure you could be like stop being a jealous asshole but that's not it because he's not being like 
don't hang out with other guys he being like we don't know this man why are you trusting him which regardless of anyone's romantic interest in you is reasonable we don't know him he popped up out of nowhere why are you trusting him anyway i'm officially halfway through the book <laughs> Okay, one of the things that's really bothering me about this book, and I'm, I've finally been able to like put it in words, the author is inconsistent. Who, like the powers that these people have is, is consistent, their reactions to one another is inconsistent, the way they present themselves is inconsistent. And it's not just, oh, character growth, because again, this is a single night, but like you have this one character who goes from being like oh my god i can see that he's scared that he wants to protect us to the next time we are in this character's point of view they're like are you sure he's not a psychopath this is your longtime friend who in what in five, like 10 pages ago you were sympathizing with an understanding of his position and how he deals with stress and trauma and now you're calling him a psychopath you're being very inconsistent with these characters and these powers because again like the new guy who came who is also a psychic his power is supposedly that once he touches someone he gets their entire life story so he should know everything about them he gets all their memories from the time they were born to the time they die or to the time they are currently in that's his power but he just touched someone and apparently he got nothing off of that now we're relying on the main psychic girl where is the consistency very frustrating <sighs> I'm gonna continue. Just over 75% through this book and I think I should be able to finish it in the next few. Um, I think I've got like 50 pages left. The thing that's bothering me now is, so they all had a big fight after um, her guy friend uh, looks through the new guy's bag and finds out that the name he gave them is fake because it's not on his passport. He's like, are we sure we can trust him? And everyone still is like, you're being a jealous jerk. Okay, even if he is jealous, he's still right, <laughs> is the thing. He's not jealous and wrong. He's jealous and completely right. This man you met the same day who isn't using his real name and you're just walking off to random places with him, defending him against your best friend. Cause like, he's like, hey, he's not using his best, his real name. And they'll, and our main character is like, Oh my god, I can't believe you looked through his stuff. He's like, are you going to skip over the fact that he gave us a fake name? She's like, you don't know, maybe he's on, maybe he came here to start a new life. Maybe he's, maybe that's a fake passport. Are you not suspicious of someone who has a fake passport? You can't read his mind. And like, Chase brought, and like, her guy friend brought that up too. She, he's like, hey, you can't read his mind, so you don't know that he's telling you the truth. She's like, I don't understand why you just want to put suspicion on him. It's just because you're jealous, because you know what? You had your chance. Listen. Ignoring the teen romance drama. He's right. You don't know him. You can't read his mind, so you can't verify anything he's saying. And he has, and he's been using a fake name. And you're just... I... I don't like that authors seem to think that teenagers are devoid of critical thought. Especially when... Or that they are going to drop their friends at the drop of a dime so quickly for when they're in a life and death situation like there's layers to this like i it just feels like the people who wrote this do not respect that teenagers are capable of, like thought in any way shape or form also apparently the, the one of these kids is like a horror um fan so why isn't he thinking like a horror fan why is not he thinking that maybe do you know that not once have they been like we should leave we should just go they found two dead bodies which they can't report to the police or they choose the act report through the police but never have they said we should we should just we should dip out we should go um i hate this book i hate this book so bad oh my god i'm so angry um before we get into it, I do want to let you know that I, um, this book, the cover doesn't even cover the pages. The cover is too short on both the front and back. So this was just cut incorrectly. 
um, which that sucks, but I only paid $7 for it, so whatever. Um, this book is bad. Um, okay, it's not bad. It's not good, though. It is, like, mid-level fan fiction. And I say this by, because, like, there's constant pop culture references. Um, the characters are inconsistent. There's a bunch of repetition that is unnecessary and doesn't flow well with the book. And if this bitch says, I'm not alone, one more time, I was ready to chuck this book out the window. Like, I'm not alone. I'm so alone. Make up your fucking mind. I get what you're trying to say here. At the end of it, she also threw in, like, how she thinks the characters were supposed to come off through the voice of the main character. They didn't. They didn't match. Two of them matched, okay? Two of them matched the personification she said they were supposed to have and the other two I'm just like what no um like the build-up was too long the climax was too rushed um I I I dislike this book a lot the twist wasn't a twist um the bad guy was exactly who we thought the bad guy was at this point the, she tried to wrap it up with this whole um, people are going to come to me on my terms I'm a strong girl I don't have to blah 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 I did not get that from this book I did not get this from this book and it felt so unearned <laughs> not only that but they try to make the guy friend out to be a jerk like he straight up says I'm sorry I was acting like a dick and I'm like did I read the wrong book am I just too forgiving what at what point was he acting like a dick to her just because he was like hey don't trust this guy and yeah again some of it was jealousy but I just feel like that's not a good enough just because some of its jealousy doesn't mean his issues aren't valid jealousy is not, just because he was a bit jealous does not mean that the comments he was making about this situation weren't valid. And the fact that that's what they tried to say, I hate this book. This is, this is a two star and I'm only giving it two because the premise is good. But it's actually a one star read. It's not good. I don't know who I remember. If you are in the mood for like some, a short book that's kind of, like it's not even spooky and it's not the age range because I get scared by middle grade horror so age range isn't the issue. This book is not good. Anyway, I need to charge my camera and I will come back to you. Okay, I'm back. I took a little breaky break. I watched some videos from Books and Lala and Nerd Explains. I took care of my dog. I got myself a new glass of water. And I also tried my best to navigate the US healthcare system. I failed. I'm gonna try again tomorrow. Um, so it's been a pretty eventful time. Um, it is currently, what time is it? It is currently 5.08. Um, and I am going to be continuing in Road of Bones by Christopher Gold. This book basically follows a, um, um, a USN, um, wannabe TV guy um, <laughs> and his friend as they travel the road of bones in Siberia which is a road where many people were worked to death in the um, gulags and um, they are traveling this road because they think it would be a cool like Discovery Channel or like National Geographic thing um, documentary and they just want to get proof that it would be good. So yeah, this book is about 228 pages, so I have 200 pages to read. And I will check in with you as needed. This is not a very like fast-paced book, so I don't think I'll be checking in nearly as much as with Horror Hotel. Anyway, see you then. I am on page 64, and I am so worried that they're gonna try and force a romance into this book. I swear, if they try to make a romance in this book, I am going to fight the world. I just, listen, I need them to not make this a romance. I need this to not have a romance in it. You could have the hint of a romance by the end. Eight. See, even she's mad. If they 
forced relationship just to fit some weird heteronormative bullshit in here. I am going to scream because I feel like it is okay to have your characters in life and death situations without trying to make them fuck. You are in sub-zero temperatures. You don't know what's going on. Now is not the time. Make that like an afterthought. Anyway, I'm going to continue. Um, I'll check back in at halfway. So I did not make it to the halfway point in the book yesterday um, just because I ended up doom scrolling and I just, I couldn't um, concentrate on anything after that. So instead, we are picking back up today. Um, I am currently on chapter eight and pretty angry that my favorite character um, is now deceased. Um, especially because we're not even halfway through the book. So now I have 75% more of this book, about 100 and some change pages of this book left where I have to sit with, with what is what looks to be um, like they're going to try and force a pseudo family on these people. And the thing is, I love found family. Ooh, I love found family. I love accidental child acquisition where you just like end up becoming a t caretaker for a child um, without any like previous plans to do so. I love it so much. Um, but something about the way this is written feels like they're going to try and it's not going to be a very natural transition. It's going to be, it feels like it's going to be very forced. Just don't see this going in a way that satisfies me. But I'm really hoping they don't do what I think they're going to do. Okay, I'm back. Um, I finished Road of Bones. Um, honestly it got itself together it did not force a family on these people there was no romantic relationships which i think makes sense in a book this short and it was just so good um i think that i'm gonna go ahead and give it a four out of five stars it would be a definite five star but the beginning was a little bit slow um and the ending was also a little bit slow. It just felt like the two tail ends didn't work, but also there's something about using another culture's mythology without being a part of that mythology that makes me not be able to give it too much kudos. Um, because like I said, while I love this, I just, I wonder how many, how many people from the region that he is describing have read this book and have things to say about it. That being said, like I said, this is a total four star. Um, if the tail end and the beginning were a little bit more sh together, um, it would have been great. I am still sad about my favorite character, but my second favorite, um, she was treated with such respect and I love that. So four out of five for this. I do recommend, actually I think, might be 4.5, 4.75. I recommend uh, Road of Bones. It was a good time. Okay, it is now 9.14 p.m. I usually go to bed around 12 o'clock or 1 a.m. So I've got a few hours on me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read Prince of Tennis Volume 1. Um, and then I will see if I can't read the first chapter in Kaiju Preservation society because usually like once it gets later at night i just kind of want to like listen to music and let myself drift off you know mindless and all that so anyway i will check back in on you after i'm done with um prince of tennis which i know is going to be a 10 out of 10 i already am so in love with this property um i already am so in love with these characters but we all know how sometimes the anime and the manga will differ. So I'm excited to see what the differences are in here. Check back in a bit. Okay, I'm about halfway through um, Prince of Tennis. And one of the things that's really coming up that's like making my reading a little bit off. And obviously as I continue the series, it'll get easier to read. But the localization of the language is so odd because like the structure that you're used to understanding as far as if like you read um like if you watch anime um subtitled or if you read like fan subbed things or if you like read translated books is different than when they localize a manga because 
the like the school structure is different and so they're talking about eighth graders and ninth graders and seventh graders and it's taking a lot for my brain to connect it to what that would mean based on my previous understanding of this anime slash manga already so like where i'm used to thinking of it as like echizen is a first year middle school student in this one they've translated it to a se seventh grader and like technically they're the same age that's correct but it feels like when you localize it to be to a north american school structure i'm saying north american i don't know what the canadian school structure is but like north american school structure specifically u.s focused as far as i can tell don't quote me um it kind of disconnects it from the rest like the story feels like it's disconnected because this is about japanese students in a japanese school and yet it sounds like they're from the u.s and obviously i only notice because it's different from what i'm used to but if i had grown up reading the manga then you know it'd be different so like they're calling like the team starters like the playing team starters rather than regulars but i'm like i was um on jv tennis in high school and i don't think we called our team starters at all so i don't even know where they got the language for that from but it's just every time i hit one of those things where it's just like or like the translation of the cat's name or um just like small things they don't actually affect the story but they're small things that are just localizations or like direct translations and i'm just like i feel like if you could just really like you know translate the words without completely taking away from the culture that that would work better <laughs> but that's a me thing again either way i still love prince of tennis i'm going to finish this up it is almost midnight here and i have taken like two benadryl because my allergies are killing me so i'm probably going to bed soon um but i just need you to know that um if you ever get the chance to read prince of tennis you should also i found out that um my book is from was from the okanagan regional library which i think is in canada so how exciting i just thought i'd share that with you i like um getting used books because they have so much history especially little library books so anyway <laughs> it is now tuesday june 28th at six o'clock p.m and i am 26 pages into kaiju the kaiju Pre preservation society um and i know what it's about now. <laughs> i picked this up mostly as a cover by actually mostly as a title by because i'm pretty sure i put this in my want to read before it even had a cover um but basically we're following this guy um during the COVID pandemic and from what i can tell it is at the beginning of the pandemic which we are still in by the way um so this was towards the beginning of the pandemic he loses his job gets stuck in uh in the gig economy as a delivery driver during the lockdown in new york and um during this time he gets offered a job by someone he knew from college and they're like hey we just need someone real quick and he's like i and honestly um while i get it because they're, they're like hey listen we work with big animals they don't tell him what kind of animals they're just like we work with big animals and he's are you okay with that he's like i mean yeah i mean you're gonna pay me so that's cool and then at some point they're like yeah we're gonna be taking care of your student loans we're gonna pay your rent while you're gone we also have a stipend you get a ten thousand dollar like signing bonus and he's like oh my goodness this is great and i'm like on the one hand this is suspicious as fuck on the other hand i get it like i get it uh they're paying off his student loan payments i mean listen he is not only paying undergrad student loans but graduate student loans i get it um but basically that's how far i am into this he's about to go on his first um mission he still doesn't know anything about the kaiju we do simply because it's in the title but he knows nothing about him he just knows he's working with big animals on a team so 
Okay, I just started re reading this chapter. Uh, who knew a check in would be this quick? One of the things that, um, it's realistic, but it's so stupid, um, is they have gotten a, since this is early into the pandemic, they have gotten a COVID vaccine, but it's like an early secret vaccine that's not available to the public. It's still experimental. Um, and one of the things they wrote is like, um, I could see Tom grinning behind his mask, which I knew he was wearing as camouflage now, just as I was. So they're like, oh, we don't have to wear a mask anymore because we're vaccinated. And I think, because like I said, this is a very realistic mindset for someone um, to have, but also it does uh, demonstrate the fundamental misunderstanding of what a vaccine does. I know. I'm a little angry because I was trying to read and I opened it up and the binding came off which um this book this hardcover book of 200 and some change pages cost me 21 dollars so I'm a little irritated by that and like to get the return, I have to take it to get shipped back. But I'm like, one, I don't have a printer, so I can't exactly print a shipping label. So the other option is to drop it back off at like an Amazon pickup point. But I don't have a car, so I have to walk up there. I can't even breathe, bro. So now I'm stuck debating whether it's worth it to either try and figure out how to bind this back together or risk an asthma attack trying to return it for my money back. Okay, I took a second to think about it and we're just gonna try and DIY this because I'm not risking an asthma attack to return it, nor am I going to pay an Uber to take me there and back because that would be like $20, $30, which would be the same as just buying a new book. So, fingers crossed this works out. It seems to be holding up. So, we're gonna see. Count that as a success. I have glue on the outside of this book, but it doesn't matter because it worked out. Thank you, Elmers. Now let's see if I can actually go back to reading it, huh? Okay, the um, falling apart debacle has been theoretically fixed. The last few pages of this might be glued to the cover, but that's fine. It's the acknowledgments, and while I try to read those, they're not a requirement for me to enjoy a book or consider it finished. Also, if they wanted me to read the acknowledgments, they shouldn't have made me have to put this thing back together myself, so. Sounds like a manufacturer issue and not a me issue. Anyway, um, I am going back to reading. I just finished dinner. Um, I watched a few YouTube videos instead of reading for the past two hours. So, I have some catch up because I do plan to finish this tonight. Unfortunately, in a twist that we all predicted, I will not be finishing this tonight. I'm exhausted. Um, turns out going into the office and being around other people all day makes me tired. In fact, too tired to finish a book. Um, I will continue reading it tomorrow. I am out of the house from like 8 a.m. until possibly 7 p.m. tomorrow. So I will be out for the almost the full 12 hours if I am correct. Um, but we're still gonna see how much we can get read. I will at least try and listen to my audiobook um, to get a little bit further. And of course, I'm gonna take this with me to work to read at lunch. Oh no, I have a thing to do during lunch tomorrow, so I won't be reading. I will try and read before I leave the house. Um, again, it's not like I'm gonna be sad if I don't finish all 11 books. I'm just gonna be really happy if I do, and I live my, for my own satisfaction. So I'm stopping at page 46 tonight, which is about 16% of the way through this book. Um, I'm still having a fun time. It is just a fun, kind of schlocky sci-fi story, and I am into it. I do like that they have, unlike 
in Horror Hotel, I am liking the pop culture references in here. And I think it's because it feels a little bit more natural. In Horror Hotel, it's just like they're throwing everything at the wall. And you can tell it is written by an adult who's not really like tuned into pop culture. I don't know. It's not even that late, but I am tired. I'm so tired. It is 10.21. I'm going to brush my teeth take a shower, wash my face, and probably watch an old Jenny Nicholson um, video as a comfort as I try and fall asleep. I'm gonna take two Benadryl again tonight because you can probably hear it, my sinuses are clogged. I am not breathing through my nose right now. Anyway, um, I think this is, I predict this is probably gonna be a solid four star because I love a schlocky um, fun sci-fi, but we will see. Anyway, I will check back in with you tomorrow. Well, first of all, I stuff it full of carrots and makes the most sound. I shouldn't say slutty, that's not right. But like they're jamming carrots in its mouth and it just was like oh. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> Hello friends, it is now Friday, July 2nd at 7.26 a.m. And since last we spoke, which I think was Wednesday, I've read exactly zero things. Um, <laughs> so today we have some things to get through. Okay, so today I am going to try and finish um, Kaiju Preservation Society, I'm hoping to finish it before noon, which is about two and a half hours. And then after that, I am going to read the first nine of the One Piece manga. Um, so while you're watching, you can either consider this three books or nine books, whichever your philosophical heart decides it is. I'm going to count them as nine because that's what they were intended as. Um, so I'm going to read the first nine of um, volumes of One Piece, which is one of my favorite series ever, even though it will never end. Um, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm starting to really question what makes the pop culture references in this work versus the pop culture references in Horror Hotel, because this also has a decent amount of pop culture references, but they feel like they fit into the story a little bit more naturally rather than um in horror hotel and i thought maybe it's because they're using older references but no pop culture references are pop culture references um especially when you're referencing something that would be people now would understand um i i think maybe it's the frequency of pop culture references um, as well as the type of pop culture references because I think in Horror Hotel you had characters randomly res um, re referencing very specific songs from very specific artists and bouts that weren't narration so like almost every single um, pop culture reference I can remember in this book is a part of a speaking dialogue but in Horror Hotel, some of it was like just as a part of non-spoken narration. But that would make sense because I think that one was in first person. So, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it because I think there's a way to successfully integrate pop culture into it. Including songs and like movies and stuff. But something about that writing felt clunky and like the author was just randomly googling things to add to it i don't know anyway continuing this this is just a thought piece that i have no answer to um if anyone knows why the references look better in one book and not the other i would love to hear your thoughts because i don't particularly dislike pop culture references i just think the ones in that one were bad hmm this book is funny and I was not expecting it I don't know why I wasn't expecting that but it's actually really funny not like laugh out loud funny but like I get the jokes I'm giggling it's a good time and I think maybe that's why the pop culture references work because the 
because the author just writes better i'm sorry i think the author just writes better it doesn't feel clunky it doesn't feel forced in and what it is is it's funny and i don't usually find books funny um but like i get their humor their humor is something that i have like I've had conversations like these with my friends and I'm having a good time. Like we just had, like they just had a conversation because they're like um, giving a kaiju pheromones because they're trying to help with the mating process. Don't ask about it, read the book. Um, and they have this entire conversation that just comes off of these kaiju games. It's just a rip off of each other. And like I've had those conversations where me and my friends just get stuck on one thing and we end up going from there. I am enjoying this book. It's a great fun read like i wasn't expecting anything much from it other than to be like an action adventure like i'm having a good time <laughs> use it to muffle the sound coming from my room when i'm yelling at fortnite at 2 a.m where did you go i'm getting shot just because i have a lot of fun making these videos all right it is now 9 47 a.m i am not done I still have half the book to go, um, but I am having a great time. I just got a little bit sleepy, so I decided to heat up some leftovers for breakfast, and then I am going to, uh, oh, I'm also in the middle of making coffee because a little bit of brain fog. Um, so just going to have a little bit of brekkie real quick, and then I am going to hop back into it got two and some change hours why did i think that 12 was two hours away from seven wow i am tired um <laughs> i got a little bit more time <laughs> coffee's done brown sugar latte per usual today and i have a snack i just remembered my boss gave to me it's a cranberry orange oatmeal cookie from a local market It's nice, not too sweet. So, not that you asked. This isn't a food review channel, but hey. I have officially reached midway through the book. Very exciting for me. Um, it is now 11.42 a.m. I don't know why I set time expectations for how long things take me to read, especially when it's a Saturday and all my favorite YouTubers are putting out new videos. I keep getting distracted. Could I have finished this by noon if I had read straight through? Yeah, but, <laughs> but you do, okay? Listen, it's not my fault that I want to support my faves, okay? Um. Anyway, halfway through, still great, having a good time. Man, I knew this was gonna be fun. Um, so I'm just gonna keep it going. Um, one of my favorite like writing gags in the story though is, um, so they'll keep saying ridiculous things and turning them into band names, which I have done with my friends. Like we'll just be living our lives and it'll be like, oh, that would be a sick band name. And one of them was, uh, Mighty Seagull Ships is a good band name. Like the Mighty Seagull Ships is a good band name. And so is Jizz Thermos. And so is Useful and Appalling. Like. Bro, what a fun time. Anyway, I'm going to get some more coffee because I'm just gonna like sling this back. Um, get some more coffee, keep on reading. I'll check back in. Okay, so now I'm a little irritated and not with the book itself, but with the per thing that's going on in the book. And I know it has a purpose, whatever. But anyway, so our main character who was fired right before the pandemic, who was in like an executive position at this company, his old boss, the old CEO who sold the company, by the way, is there in the other world at the Kaiju place because he came from money, you know, rich people. Um, and he, and he's like, oh, no hard feelings for getting fired. And I'm like, our main character's name is Jamie, by the way. And I'm just like, Jamie, 
why the fuck are you talking to this man you can be you are on a helicopter you have a perfectly good excuse not to be having this conversation worst of all the reason he wants to talk with you without your little headsets is so other people can't hear let everyone hear why are you talking to this man you know he's skeezy he took your ideas implemented them after firing you and then sold the company you know he ain't shit you know he ain't shit don't trust him jamie you've been doing so well so far don't trust him i am i i don't i don't want anything to happen to my precious baby jamie honestly i am attached to these main characters i attach to all of these characters but especially to my precious boy jamie and i will be I don't want anything bad to happen to this sunshine boy. Anyway, I will continue my reading. <laughs> okay, just finished that chapter and damn, do I love these scientists. Listen, I love my sweet baby angels at the KPS. I love them. So, um, Jamie's old boss was trying to get their helicopter driver, um, Dr. I don't know his last name, so we'll just go with Sadie. Is Sadie his last name? Yes, Dr. Sadie. So his air, his um, helicopter driver, who's pretty cool, he's shown up a few times in the book already. Um, the, his old boss tried to convince him to like land and Sadie's like, you know what? Don't insult me, get the fuck off my, my helicopter. And he's like, excuse me, ah, uh, ah, uh, sweet, glorious satisfaction. It's so good, wow officially one of my favorite parts of the book so far because I love seeing a billionaire put in their place yes um wow that was really aggressive I have not <laughs> one of my favorite parts of this book so far goodness gracious I can't stop cheesing I love my sweet baby angels I'm going to continue but all I'm gonna say is chapter 17 is that girl I love it <laughs> okay I am a little i'm around 75 percent including close to 75 percent oh next chapter is exactly 75 so i am sensing my conflict me personally i'm fine with no conflict i'm fine with them just having an adventure but i'm sensing the conflict that's probably gonna hit soon i'm pretty sure the military and these um investors are going to try to do something to either bring a kaiju back to weaponize them or to make it a pet or something because that's what billionaires and government do in all these stories so i'm pretty sure one of them is going to do something stupid and try to move one over because they're asking all these pointed questions like can you drug a kaiju can you control them can you put them to sleep you can make it do what you want how do you keep it in one place it's sounding very much like they're trying to get this kaiju to go to the other side to our earth and honestly, based on what we've read so far, that would be a horrible idea. Also, because have you never watched any kaiju movie ever? Any kaiju movie ever. The only way humans win in those movies is if we kill the kaiju or if they decide they want to go home. Those are the two ways. And people, and these people are like, well, we can control them, right? And the scientists are like, fucking no, they're animals. They are not going to be controlled. You can give them hormonal suggestions, but much like people, control is not a part of the equation um anyway i'm just saying that they are making some very pointed questions having some very pointed suggestions and i think i know where this conflict is going and i think it's going to be really satisfying when it fails so i was right and i'm mad about it like i'm not surprised i'm not surprised this is expected but i was right our kai one of the kaiju and its eggs stolen to the other side to our world we know it was a rich dick because they, they had mercenaries so all i'm saying is i was right i'm mad i am invested i love this book i knew i would oh my goodness anyway i am on chapter 23 of 28 i think it is <clears throat> chapter 23 of Yes, I'm on chapter 23 of 28. So, um, theoretically, the next time I check in will be once something great happens or at the end of this book. All I know is that one of my favorite characters has gone kaput. 
I'm not happy about this. Why does this keep happening to me? Why do my favorite side characters keep going out the window? I know why, because they don't respect my my heart. Anyway, gonna keep reading and I will. I love all of my KPS lovelies, but I also love my little rage ball. Nayim, they are amazing. Who doesn't love a non-binary baddie? OMGZ. And they are just so angry and such a badass, but also kind of whiny. I love them. I love my entire cast, all right? I'm gonna tell you all about them when I finish. I'm on chapter 25, I've got three more to go, and oh my God, I love this book. Okay, I completed it. It was amazing. Definitely like a 4.5, 4.5 out of five stars. 10 out of 10, recommend this book. Um, if you're looking for deep, maybe not for you. But I think this was a good examination. Um, shallow, but still good. Um, a good examination of capitalism, of relationships, found families. Um, it was a great action adventure. Paying it forward, like deeds, whether they're good or bad, paying that forward. Intergenerational wealth. Just a good book all around. I had a great time. Again, it's really, it's not a deep book. Don't go in here looking for philosophical debates about the rights and wrongs of the world. Go into this for an adventure and then have a little sprinkle of those thoughts. Um, the cast of characters was amazing. Everyone had such strong personalities. Even the ones we only met for like a brief period at the front. They stuck out so well. Um, Jamie, our main character, loved them um and then you had our team of scientists we had um neom i neom um and they were i think astrophysicist sassy angry just a trash goblin all around loved them and then their parna who was a biologist a parna great she asked questions as she should she was curious that's how we like our scientists everyone's really sassy here and then our other teammate was rangi kahurangi there we go and they did geology and physics i think it was um so honestly you have your you have your scientists we have jamie who lifts things everyone gets along so well the base just works together you see how these people even though they're there for short periods of time form these really close bonds i love this book it is up there i honestly i think this might be one of an all-time favorites they're just books that i want to come back to again and again and again and again and that would be the kaiju preservation society if they ever decide to make it into a movie or a tv show or an animated short i will watch so quickly if this ever becomes a series or they just have a companion novel to it I'm set, I'm ready to go. And it has officially made me interested in knowing more about John Scalzi's um, work. And honestly, there's what else can I say except this is a great book. Anyway, next I am going to, next I am getting started on the first nine of the One Piece series. Um, the first three are in the East Blue. I think these are all in the East Blue, yeah. So, gonna get started on these. I sent you a song. It had your name in it and I improv it on the spot. Here They translated Zoro's name as Zolo and I just, I don't think I've ever heard any pronunciation even in the English translation of the anime of his name as Zolo. It's Zoro. Why? Because Zoro exists in many languages. Was his name meant to be Zolo? I don't, mm, I'm going to choose to ignore it. His name is Zoro. Them's the breaks. I just, I refuse. If this is the truth, I refuse to know it. I will pretend I did not see. His name is Zoro, but wow, what the fuck? <laughs> so, I just got to the introduction of Zoro's backstory. If you know, you know. And the one thing that confuses me and has always confused me no matter how many times I rewatch it is, um, I don't remember, like, I don't care how many times I see it, I never remember the relationship. I call her his sister all the time. His rival, um, she's like, starts crying because she's like, I can't, I can't become the greatest swordsman. I'm growing breasts and like, 
if this universe had been established as like he loves to do this when I start talking if this universe had been established as somewhere that is overtly sexist sexist and women are not considered strong that reaction would make sense but like our first introduction to a pirate in Luffy's adulthood is a woman so people already are fine with women being strong so why would her growing tits <laughs> make her unable to be a great swordsman it's never explained <laughs> it's just one day she beats Zoro the next day she's crying and she can't be a swordsman because hormones I'm so confused and I need someone anyone to make me less confused. Again, if this universe had established that women are considered weak or that it was overtly sexist where like no one's gonna take her seriously, even if she got the title, they wouldn't respect it. But this universe isn't like that, so I don't understand. I just, I don't get it. Anyway, back to my reading. Also, it's really funny um, when you are a squire and when you're pretty far into the series when you read or watch the early stuff and everyone's so surprised oh my god he ate a devil fruit he's one of those people <laughs> and it's just like yeah I mean w as you continue you find out these people are pretty fucking common but they are not very close to the grand line so they don't see them nearly as often but like the farther you get into the series, the less you realize how rare it is for someone to have a devil fruit power. Because it seems like once you get farther in that every other person you meet has a devil fruit power. But that would also, it correlates directly to the fact that in order to get to the grand line, pretty much everyone has to already have some kind of power. Like it makes sense, but it's always so funny when you go back to the beginning. <laughs> I'm on volume two. We met Captain Buggy. He's great. Captain Buggy is one of my favorite um, long-term characters. Question though is, okay, Nami stole his map to the ground line. Why does no one ever think to make a copy of the fucking map? And like, you have one here, you have one another place. Cause it doesn't matter how many people have, like if there's an abundance of the map because you still have to survive, right? So like, why don't you just make a copy? I didn't know what ever think about this. Just saying. Now I'm sitting on a different part of the couch. Um, they really just decided to just copy this is directly out of Shonen Jump because here they have instructions for how to make a little paper Luffy action figure. They're like, yeah, just cut this page out, blah, blah, blah. This is on an actual part of my book. Not only that, this is very thin paper. It's not going to stand up to the test. Of being cut that's hilarious um, oh wow and it keeps going on the back There's so many instructions um, oh I am now on volume three. we have um, we are meeting um, Usopp and the one thing is we meet Captain Kuro when we um, meet Usopp. But the thing is, Captain Kuro's plan is so fucking ridiculous. Like, he waited three years. Three years. I, I'd be exhausted. Like, three years? She's all... You, you could have... Listen, you could have killed her a while ago is all I'm saying. You didn't need to wait three years for this. You could have found an excuse. There's so many poisons out there. You did not need three years, my guy. I think I think he was feeling paternal. <laughs> okay, going in to volume four, where we're hanging out with Captain Kudo. Um, honestly, one thing from the last one, Kudo talks too much. He talks way too much. Stop expositing. I understand why he does it. But like, yap, 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 shut up. Also, you're doing it on the open. Why wouldn't they be like, I don't know, in a closet, on a ship, anywhere that's not like, they're at the bottom of a ravine, which would echo. So like, you're a pirate. You shouldn't know these things, friends. Get 
your shit together. Don't don't talk about your murder plot in public, guys. I'm on the floor now and I refuse to adjust my tripod. So this is our angle. <laughs> um I am halfway done with volume four and I always found it so funny how they tried to make it seem as if Kaya and the villagers were just in the wrong for not believing Usopp when he finally was telling the truth that pirates are coming but I'm like this man lies to them on a daily basis and he is in his like eight he's like 17 18 and he's been lying since he was like 12 he, so he has been lying almost every single day since he was 12 years old. They have had years of him telling him them that their entire home is about to burn down and they don't believe him the one time in years that he's telling the truth and suddenly they're in the wrong. Like, yeah, it sucks, but like, Usopp is a liar. He's always a liar. Even in future, like, seasons slash, he's just a liar. He, that's what he does. As much as he, like, grows as a person and becomes less of a coward, he always stays a liar. I'm sorry. So the fact that people don't believe him just isn't that big a deal. Again, it sucks for them. But, like, the, but, like, the author has them feeling bad that they didn't believe him. We just, we didn't believe a courageous boy. You didn't believe him because he's a liar. That's what he does. I wouldn't believe a liar either. If you showed me who you were, I'm gonna believe you the first time. And if you change your mind the 700th time, well that's, it sucks, but mm, that's the way it is. Hi Riley. Okay, it is now 11:11 11, 11 on Saturday, July 2nd. I have managed to complete all 11 books that I planned. In fact, I am I completed 13. 10 manga, 3 novels. As I decided earlier, um, I have decided to go ahead and extend this into Sunday, so I'm gonna read, try and read one more novel tomorrow. I will select that um, then, but um, I have managed 13 books. And just a recap of my thoughts, a full summarization of my thoughts on the first nine One Piece um, manga. So, I already like One Piece. One Piece is a property that I know I enjoy. I know that I have a good time with it. I like most of the characters. So this wasn't one that I felt comfortable rating because I already have strong feelings about it. I've sat through 700 and some change episodes. I just think I'm too far into it to give a fair rating. That being said, um, I she is just a continuous misogynist. Like, I don't care what people say. Oh, he loves women, he loves women. He loves the idea of women. Sanji's a misogynist. He thinks he knows better. He does not see them as equal human beings. It's just not cute. Um, so those two get on my nerves, but I loved re-meeting Zoro, even though in this series, in the, this translation, they call him Zolo. disgusting every time i read his name i was immediately disgusted so i hated this translation um but still loved meeting zoro still love meeting um baby luffy while he's all young and fresh faced i am happy to meet um usopp again even though he is one of the most annoying characters in this series um but he's annoying in a lovable way um very excited to meet everybody to reintroduce myself to this world kind of makes me want to restart the anime but i haven't even caught up so i can't do that i cannot go back until i reach the current spot in time either way though these were a great read for today i'm glad i spent my time with them um i know some people are gonna be like that's three books because it's three physical books but each of these is the full length of the individual tiny ones so Feel how you want to feel me and my peeps me and my homies these are all each of these is an individual story anyway 
Um, like I said, I will choose my next read for tomorrow, but I did read my, meet my goal for the week. So that is really satisfying. Um, and I will do a full wrap up of everything tomorrow. I'm also going to be recording my mid-year freak out and my wrap up for the Solstice Readathon. So you're gonna be seeing some content from me. How exciting. <laughs> All right, so this is the end of the vlog. If you were watching the clips, you might have heard me say that I was planning on reading on Sunday. I didn't end up doing that. I woke up and I was like, you know what? I actually don't feel like it. I am not interested in picking up any of the books that I previously picked out. Not right now, I do plan to read them at some point, obviously. Um, and also, my dog just wasn't feeling well yesterday and I was just like, I didn't want to not take care of my dog. So it is now Monday, July 4th. And I'm just gonna give you a quick quick recap for all the people who um, didn't watch all those clips because I'm sure this is very long. Um, so the first book I finished this week, last week, whatever, was <laughs> Horror Hotel by Victoria Fulton and Faith McLaren. The cover art is done by David Seidman and the cover design was by Casey Moses. Um, this is actually one of my favorite covers, I think, maybe of the year so far. This is a gorgeous cover. I think that this cover just deserves... I would buy a poster of this. Um, honestly, I think this cover deserved a better book. This book was about a group of YouTubers, young YouTubers, who are all like 17, 18, who go to um, the Hearst Hotel, which is their version of the Cecil Hotel, where a tragic and mysterious death happened and um, they are going to investigate that and then they encounter supernatural woes. Um, that's all I can give you. It sounds much more interesting than it actually is. After I've taken some time I can really like put more of my thoughts into words. So I ended up giving this a two star. It was actually a 1.5 star reading experience for me but I gave it an extra 0.5 just because I felt like the premise of this and the like interspersing of really great horror moments were beautiful. Like I could see how this could be a good book. Like I saw these parts of brilliance, like their description of all the horrifying elements could have been amazing. However, unfortunately the authors had very bad characterization of these characters. Like they were very inconsistent. They would act one way, one chapter, then we came back to their point of view and they'd be acting and thinking a different way. And on one hand, I was like, maybe this is going to be explained by supernatural elements. However, it was not. That is just how they write and it did not come off well. Um, it was a little bit clunky. They used a lot of, um, they used a lot of pop culture references. Sorry, you're going to be hearing Riley play with his toy in the background this entire time. It's his house too and he's coming off of a sick tummy so I'm not gonna take his toys away. Um, but like they just weren't consistent. They did not, um, they did not give these teenagers any kind of like, they act as if teenagers are just irrational people. Teenagers make decisions on, based on some kind of rationale. Like when I was a teenager, I might have made decisions that me as an adult wouldn't make. However, I had a rationale behind that. And here, there is no rationale. It's just, they make a decision. They're just instinctive decisions without any reasoning behind them. Teenagers aren't illogical beings. They just follow their own internal logic. Also, um, just the writing wasn't good. They used a lot of pop culture references. Um, and I'm not, against pop culture references as a thing. I just don't think they did it very well in here. So overall, I personally did not like this book. Someone else might, like if you aren't easily like caught up on consistencies between characters, that is a-okay. This might be for you. I think this is a f all, mm, I was angry a lot through it, but I think you could have a lot of fun with this book. I think this book might have been better this book is better served as like a film script. This book is better served as maybe a show or like a mini series or a movie, um, especially with all those pop culture references. Like think maybe instead of like referencing a song in the dialogue of someone's thought process, they could have like, this would be better played with the song becoming like a background. I don't know. Just, I did not like this book. It made me incredibly furious. I forced my friends to hear me rant about it. Mm. The next book I read is Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. Um, this cover art 
This jacket design is by Jonathan Bush and the art um, are photos from Getty, Getty Images that are all put together. Um, Road of Bones, it follows a... Is he a producer? I don't know enough about those terms to say it, but someone who works in television, he's pitching a new show to Discovery that he wants to show about the Road of Bones. Um, it is the Komia Highway in Siberia. It is a highway along which many people died um, in the gulags uh, when they were under occupation and it was honestly that history i want to, it made me want to learn more about the history but it also sounds like it's going to be heartbreaking um but it's following a man who wants to do a documentary to call life and death along the boat of bones along the road of bones because this particular area is one of the coldest places on earth and there are people who are living and thriving there and he wants to like do a show or documentary about those people but while, when they get to their destination they encounter um when they get to their destination they find a young girl in an empty town and then supernatural elements ensue um and that's this is all stuff you can get from the uh synopsis so i'm not spoiling anything um i personally loved this book when i was reading it i was afraid that they were going to try and force a relationship um in ways that just didn't work this is only like a 240 26 it's a very short book i just didn't feel like there was enough time for them to really establish anything that looked good and i was a little cautious about how they would treat the spirits along this road because that is an element that they talk about in the synopsis that they're talking about the spirits along the comio of the deceased along this road and i was really worried about how he might treat them because i feel like a lot of times when it comes to ghost stories they um villainize these spirits and so um it was treated with respect as far as i can tell um the one thing is like i don't know how the yakult i think that's how you pronounce it i don't know how yakult people would feel about the characterization of their myths if this is a true myth that they're using um because i know like a lot of people like to use native american um cryptids and like you're not even supposed to say the name of certain cryptids and you're just throwing them in any old book okay um but yeah so I don't know how anyone of that culture would feel about the characterization of their cryptid slash myths um and i think there is a presentation of a goddess in here as well that i don't know how they would feel about that however as someone from the outside who does not know that i love this book it was a 4.5 star for me um i was like i said i was a little cautious at the beginning i was worried it was going to be another two but by the end of it it was really great it was really gripping there were heart pounding moments like at it slowly builds up and then as you go it's faster and faster and faster you get and you jump in other people everyone's head like the beginning and the end were a little too slow for me but that middle chunk is so good i highly recommend this book even if it does have this ugly permanent sticker on it this is a great book. I'm so happy. So next I read, what did I read next? Next I read Prince of Tennis volume one. This was actually really difficult for me to get my hands on. Um, this is the first in a 1990s man um, sports uh, manga. I actually am a big fan of the anime. I've never read the manga, so this is something I wanted to do. Um, you're following a young tennis player, Echizen, as he goes to a new school and joins the regular team there. Um, and it's a sports manga. I don't know what else to tell you. I had a great time. Since I do have previous experience with this, um, fandom IP, um, I didn't feel comfortable rating it because I just feel like my nostalgia and my understanding of this is going to color my rating. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed learning these characters from the manga perspective. I enjoyed re-entering this world. Um, I think if you are interested in getting into manga or sports anime or anything, this is a great place to start. And this is by Takeshi Konomi, um, both the story and the art. The next book I read is The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. Um, the cover, the jacket photographs are by Hannah Vin Vidin Pa. It's got umlauts over the A's and I don't particularly know how to pronounce them. I did look it up and I'm not good at that. I'm so sorry. Um, but, and I will have her, I will have all the cover designers like in the description so you can see those. And the jacket design is by Peter Luchin. And this is a new 
favorite. When I initially read it, I gave it a 4.75 out of 5. Honestly, sitting on it and the way it stuck in my head, I've decided to give it a 5 star. This is a great book. I had such a good time. I'm not going to say it's great writing, but I think it is a great story. It is really good for what it is trying to do. It is a it is an action adventure that is going to just keep you moving through the story. There is no point where you're like, oh, this slows down, it's less interesting. It builds up and builds up, it builds up. It has that little peak moment of conflict and then it builds down. There's no weird, there's no unnecessary like fluff to it. And that is something I enjoy. I usually give five stars to books that I want to reread over and over and over again that are infinitely consumable. This is one of those books. Um, in this, we are following a um a recently we are following jamie our protagonist who was recently fired from his job at a tech company where he was in an executive position and this is right at the beginning of the pandemic so he ended up having to work as a delivery driver um and supporting both himself and his roommates where he during one of his deliveries he meets one of his old um i wouldn't call it college acquaintances that offers his an opportunity to work with the KPS and we go from there um, this is really great we meet a fun and eccentric and like really distinct cast of characters uh, we have a great cast of characters who all have like really important roles who are um, sassy or bright and they all and we have like casual queerness in this book which I love one of my favorite characters is a non-binary um, physicist is it a physicist or a geologist Ooh, either way it was just a great time if um john scalzi makes any more works in this world or if this ever gets picked up for a tv show or a short i am going to be there and ready to consume it um i also found out that john scalzi has like a ton of books and one of those is a um book called red shirts that is based on the life of red shirts in the star trek universe and i am very interested Hello? Uh, Hi, <laughs> give me just a minute. I'm filming a wrap-up. <laughs> no worries, no worries at all. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, I mean, you can listen if you want. <laughs> it's okay, it's, I talk to you anything. I'm just gonna add to it. There we go. Where was I? Oh, I found out that he has a book called Red Shirts that is based on the red shirts in the Star Trek universe. And I am really interested in finding out more. So that'll be my next read from him. Um, last but not least, the last books I read were the first nine volumes in the One Piece manga series. And much like Prince of Tennis, I am already a fan of this series that is still ongoing. I'm on like episode 750 out of a thousand and some change i'm still catching up but i decided to go and read the first nine volumes depending on your philosophical ideas of what a book is and is not you either count this as nine books or three i'm not here to debate you i've decided to count it as nine and this was a great ride i got reintroduced to the original the main crew we haven't been um introduced to chopper just yet we are currently um trying to get nami safe so this is a great read if you are interested in um getting into the one piece fandom i would suggest getting these chunkier versions it's much more affordable than buying them individually and there are a ton of books um i don't have much else to say about this just because again this is just kind of an introduction and i'm already in this fandom so i already know that i like them so Either way, those were the books I managed to finish this past week. I had a really great time. I'm thinking of doing more um, vlogs as I move forward because I know that's the kind of content I personally like to see on booktube. So be the content you want to see in the world, you know? Anyway, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I hope you had a good time. If you watched the entire vlog, hope that was entertaining. If you just watched this section, thank you anyway. If you ever want to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, what's that other one? Storygraph and Readerly, all at Fiction and Flora. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.